It came out of nowhere. I have no idea what happened. How do I keep this from reoccurring? I get these questions a lot. A lot of times musculoskeletal pain, meaning joints, bones, ligaments, muscles, there's a precipitating factor, meaning unless I go ski myself off of a cliff and wreck myself, the pain that I'm having in my back or my knee or my shoulder, there's likely some habits or movement deficits that are either contributing to you being in pain or that are keeping you there once you're there. If my car wheels are not balanced and aligned and I go out, I hit the road, I come back and I realize my passenger front tire has absolutely no tread left. The other ones, they're all okay. I don't say, man, wear and tear must have seen so much more road than all the other tires. No, we do this with our joints all the time. We just chalk it up to wear and tear, but it's not just wear and tear, it's abnormal wear and tear. When we think back to the car analogy, our tires should wear out similarly. There's gonna be a little bit of difference based on what takes more brunt, but you don't see one ball and the other ones look brand spanking new still unless you've just replaced one. So when we look at the body, we have repair mechanisms. Whereas the car, you just have to replace them. The body has repair mechanisms. So when we think about wear and tear, we don't wanna just think about uh, how much did we use it, but are we using it more than our repair mechanisms are able to make up for? It's not just the fact that we walked, it is where are our mechanics different than what they should be? Where are we putting abnormal wear and tear on our body? So there's a few ways that usually happens, which is what leads us to our current series, Skills You Suck At. This might seem stupid to call this a skill you don't have because you've obviously been doing this since you were a baby. I mean, you're still alive. So we know you can at least kind of breathe. But before you go find a different video about Cardi B or cars or whatever you're gonna go watch, hang with me. As much as yes, you can get oxygen into your lungs, breathing involves creating pressures with your diaphragm, your transversus abdominis, your obliques that kind of wrap around the sides here. And, and that's really what most people suck at. And these pressures that you're creating, these are key because they not only help with how much oxygen you're getting in, like to your brain and to your muscles, but also it helps stabilize. So it helps stabilize your low back by creating intra-abdominal pressure. Uh, it also affects your digestion and your nervous system, especially the fight or flight part, which is what kicks in when somebody's yelling at you for spending too much time on your phone, watching videos. So at this point, you're just wondering, how do I breathe? Breathing starts with a diaphragm, which is right at the bottom of your rib cage. Now, the mechanical portion of this is when your diaphragm pushes down, it puts pressure on what's below, which is your guts. You have the core muscles of which wrap around, which is your transverse abdominus muscles and your obliques, and your six pack really doesn't do a whole lot, which is good, because mine's not that developed. As it contracts, it actually flattens down, which creates more space in your chest for your lungs to expand, suck in air, it's kind of like a vacuum. You create more space, there's more space for air, more air comes in, and then that's how you get your oxygen. When it's time to exhale, all those muscles just kind of relax. The diaphragm comes back up, the pressure from underneath pushes it back up, and that forces the air up and out. So how does that get messed up? So go ahead and take a deep breath. Most people do one of these numbers. Which is not ideal. When you suck in air and your shoulders come way up and your head comes back, that means you're using the accessory breathing muscles. Accessory breathing muscles are all the muscles that are up in your throat and your shoulders and upper rib cage, and they're the ones that do this. Now, as your diaphragm pushes down, it puts pressure on what's below. Your core muscles wrap around and they're elastic -y, so as your diaphragm pushes down, there's pressure out against them, but they also put some pressure in. It's your transverse abdominus and your obliques and they wrap around and what that does is that creates a balloon of pressure and you have your pelvis underneath. So you have pressure in, pressure up, pressure down and instead of having your spine for your whole upper half to sit on, you have a column because you kind of stuck a balloon in between your rib cage and your pelvis. Olympic weightlifters are a really good example of this because as they lift all that weight, you see their bellies come out because in order for their upper body to be able to support all that weight, they have to have a really solid foundation, which is their core. The best way you can do this is to kind of give yourself, there's two cues. One, if you stick one hand up on top and you stick one hand on your belly and you take a big deep breath, the top hand shouldn't move a whole lot. The bottom hand moves a lot more. So if you take one of those big deep breaths like we took earlier, your top hand moves a whole lot more than the bottom hand. 
As I inhale, my bottom hand moves out away from my spine. And then as I exhale, it moves back in. My top hand doesn't do a whole lot. If at this point you have absolutely no idea what you're supposed to be feeling, start on your back. When you lay on your back, your core can disengage a little bit and you bend your knees and that makes this a little easier to get the hang of. If you wanna push yourself a little further, you stick your hands on your hips with your fingers in the front and your thumbs in the back. As you take a big deep breath, your hands should move away from each other and you should feel your breath not only in your fingers, but in your thumbs. Once you get the hang of this laying, you can start to incorporate it when you're walking, when you're sitting, when you're standing, when you're lifting, especially lifting because this intra-abdominal pressure is what keeps you stable and from screwing yourself up. For the next week, try setting a reminder for yourself a couple times a day to check how you're breathing throughout different environments. In the car, at your desk, as you're laying, walking, or when you're stressed out. If you're having a hard time with it, take a few practice deep breaths using the two cues. And remember, your breath helps not just with delivering oxygen, but also stabilizing your spine, facilitating digestion, controlling pH, reducing stress, and calming the fight or flight part of your nervous system. It's important to integrate into your daily movement because it helps support normal biomechanics, which is the way your body's supposed to move. It's foundational in being able to move the way you should. It transfers weight when you're lifting, stabilizes your spine when you're bending and twisting, and supports your upper half when you're sitting. And speaking of sitting, we're gonna talk about sitting next. So until then, stay tuned and keep breathing.